What's up, Cinemaniacs? I am back from watching Furious 7, the seventh installment of the Fast and Furious franchise. This movie is everything that you're looking for in a Fast and Furious movie. You have the car chases, the fights, and all that kind of stuff. Everything like that, but on steroids. And steroids isn't always a good thing. Those pictures prove my case. <laughs> this movie was fun. Was it the best of the franchise? Not in my opinion. Was it fun? Yes, it was fun. But there are a lot of problems with this movie. But I'm gonna start off with some of the better points. In this movie, we have a new addition. In the last movie, you saw Luke Evans, and he apparently had a brother who was more of a badass than he was. And that is Jason Statham's character. Now, Jason Statham was a believable mercenary badass with special ops training. That was Jason Statham in this movie and he fit the part to a T perfectly. Starting this movie off, you get a fight between Jason Statham and The Rock. Jason Statham is so good at playing this character, you believe that he can stand toe to toe with The Rock. It's not like in the fifth movie where The Rock and Vin Diesel went at it and I just did not believe it. That is one of my biggest faults with this franchise is I do not believe Vin Diesel as this extreme fighter. If I ever had an interview with The Rock about this franchise, I would say to him, dude, that's total BS. How can you not take out Vin Diesel? How can it be even close to a draw? Technically, it seemed like Vin beat you in the movie. And they do bring that back around full circle in this movie at the beginning. Now, if Vin Diesel came up to me and was like, if he ever said that to me, I would be like, oh no, absolutely. You could you could kill you could kill the rock. Absolutely. And then when he got far enough away, I'd be like, that's BS. And then I would start running in the opposite direction. Because I know he could obviously kick my butt. But I get back to the movie where you have this this fight between Jason Statham and The Rock. Totally believable. You feel like Jason Statham can hold his own with his skill set. He is really putting on a show. And him and The Rock are going back and forth and it really looks like a draw. You really feel like it could go either way. And then when this scene is over, you are like, all right, let's go. Let's bring this on. I am ready for this movie. I am ready to go. But unfortunately, that is the best fight scene in the whole movie and The Rock was barely utilized in this movie. If you're going to this movie to go see The Rock, you're gonna be let down because he is in it for probably 15 minutes. The rest of the fight scenes were filled with shaky cam and even the second best fight scene that you got between Ronda Rousey and Michelle Rodriguez, there was too much shaky cam to really enjoy it. It takes away from the actual fight choreography. And that leads me to something else. Since when did all of these characters learn to be martial art badasses? Since when did, you know, Ludacris learn to be a karate master? But that's what you're here for, right? Terrible dialogue, poor acting, terrible script, shaky cam fights, and car chases. The acting wasn't all that bad. Jason Statham did a very good job. The Rock, for what he had, it was his almost his wrestling persona in this, which was fine. For this kind of movie, absolutely fine. The other breath of fresh air was Kurt Russell. He was. It was actually you actually got to see somebody that could carry on two to three, four sentences of dialogue without having to take a pause to remember their next line. For the fans of Friends, it would be kind of like the smell the fart acting. And Vin Diesel the whole time is like this. And he says like three words at a time. And then he says three more words. And then he wants a Corona. Like that is him in this whole movie. And Kurt Russell comes on the scene and it's just a breath of fresh air. He, he was only in it for a short period of time, but he was really good. And that's my biggest problem with this is that the poor acting in it takes away from the believability of the movie. You can have a movie like in Kingsman, totally over the top, but you believed it because the actors that were in the movie sold it. Now, I know I'm trashing this movie quite a bit, but the movie wasn't all that bad. It had some moments, but when it comes down to it, Vin Diesel's predictions of Oscar talk and best picture talk, wow, not even close. This is definitely more Razzie worthy than it is Oscar worthy. And the one aspect that you could think that it might be nominated for is maybe like stunt work or CG work. CG is out. You could tell that there was green screen used, which you shouldn't be able to tell that in a movie. And it just didn't look real. And that is what you're supposed to do in movies like this is sell the reality. Like in the Mission Possible, like I have seen in the trailer, Tom Cruise hanging on the side of the plane. It looks like he's hanging on the side of a plane because he actually is. But still, you need to believe that these characters are doing what they're doing. The problem is, is it was so over the top, so unbelievable. It left you laughing. 
It left me laughing quite often in the theater when I'm sure they weren't really looking for laughs. I went and saw it in IMAX the second weekend it was out and I was not the only one laughing at those point in times. These movies are not well known for their scripts and dialogue. But as far as scripts and dialogue, I feel like this is one of the worst out of all of them. The script was confusing and not to the audience member, but to itself. Like they tried to fit too much story into this one movie and it really kind of pulled it apart more than held it together. I really enjoyed the aspect of Jason Statham coming after this group of guys because of what they did to his brother. And when I said before how the, the movie kind of confuses itself, they kind of have two separate plots. They have the one with Jason Statham and then they have a whole other plot with this other character and I don't want to get into too many spoiler details right now I'm going to do a spoiler a little bit later at the very end of this I have to because I need to get it off my chest because it was one of the goofiest scenes I have ever seen in a movie <laughs> If they take this any further, they're going to have to go the Sharknado route and just go completely over the top, forget about the dialogue altogether, completely jump the shark, go the Sharknado route if you want to. But I feel like they should just stop the franchise itself. They won't, but they should. So, I mean, when it comes down to it, I'm going to rate this movie right now because after I rate it, I'm going to go into my little spoiler. I'm going to rate this movie. I, I'm going to give this a positive rating. It is a six out of 10 for me. I did have fun watching it. It is a total popcorn flick. It did go way over the top and I do think that they should end it. I did like the, the tribute. I felt it was kind of forced on the movie, which is fine. I understand what they wanted to do there. It wasn't as touching to me as some. I know that a lot of people were crying and teared up during that scene. For me, I just felt like it was too forced and it felt like a totally different movie which is fine and I felt like they got their point across which was the point but now I want to get into the spoiler at the very end of this movie you have Vin Diesel's character Dom Toretto who has been in these terrible car crashes throughout the whole movie the whole movie and most of the time he gets out of the car to fight somebody so not only did he get out of the car this is part of the spoiler he rolled down a mountain in a car and his car was destroyed at the end he walked out and it was fine like he did a little one of these you know, uh, then you have this one scene at the very end. He has these grenades to kind of try and blow up a helicopter, jumps in the air with his car, gets the grenades, tries to throw them on the helicopter and then crashes his car. And it didn't look like anywhere near as close to the bat of crashes as the other ones. But this one, they get him out of the car, not moving. He's dead. Paul Walker's character, Brian, comes up and he starts doing compressions. He's telling Letty to get on and doing a CPR to start, you know, breathing, giving him life in his lungs. They're going, going crazy. Brian's screaming like, breathe, breathe, go, go, breathe, breathe. And they go in there going crazy. They're trying to bring him back to life. I'm like, all right, they're really trying to hammer this home. They're going to bring him back to life through CPR. Nope. Letty finally says, no, stop it, stop it. She's been having memory problems still throughout the whole movie and she cannot do CPR on him because that isn't gonna work. You know what will work? Memories. She's holding him. I'm gonna tell you I remember everything now. It flooded back to me. Really? You're gonna bring him back with memories. <laughs> The most ridiculous scene I have seen in not a spoof in such a long time. Holy cow, is that ridiculous? Well, anyway, that's it for my review. Please, if you haven't uh, checked out any of my other reviews, you can check them out on the YouTube channel. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to YouTube. It is the most important thing. So click that little subscriber button because we need those subscribers. Mm -hmm.